In this video, I'm going to show you how to master hard ops in only a few minutes. Let's go. Look, modeling is important, I know, but so is everything else in the design process. In our free Hard Surface Jumpstart course, you will not only feel more comfortable with hard surface modeling, but also confident with rendering and excited about your new game-changing portfolio. Link is in the video description. Let's get started. Now, hard ops is an interesting tool, just like Blender has a lot of different kind of options, but you don't need to know all of them, okay? So let me show you the essence, all the tools I'm using every day. Hopefully, it's going to be helpful for you. So. First of all, when you install Hardops, you're going to see this icon on the top and icon in here, right? That means your Hardops is installed. To check whether you're in the current version, click on this one and you will see it in here. If it's not, it will tell you to update. Secondly, what you want to do is you want to set it up. So click on a star and enable these options, okay? Read them later. If you hover over, they'll tell you what it is. Then if you need help, you also can go here and check all the links. PG. Now, last thing you want to do is press Alt-V with Hardops and enable Cavity. It's going to enable you to see edges a bit better. Then once you do that, go to preferences and save them and also save start the file. Cool. Now each time you open your blender, you're going to see the same settings. Now there are a few different menus for hard ops and one of them is Q. That's the main menu. Another one is control tilde, which is really important. And then you have alt M for materials and also alt V, the one you just seen. These are menus I'm using 99% of the time. Okay. So now, the Q menu is the main one, you're going to be using it all the time, and the menu will change depending on what you have on the screen, what you have selected, what mode you're in, okay? So, for example, if I'm going to have a cube here, my menu is going to be different, right? And if I'm going to go to edit mode, it's going to be different. See what I mean? So, don't panic, it's just a different state of menu. That's it, right? Now, Hardops menu is really clever because it will group up the tools at the top that you're most likely to use. So, for example, when I'm starting modeling, I can go with the bevel right here, and you can scroll your mouse to adjust the segments. You can see it in the bottom. Then click, go to Q, and Alt click on Sharpen, which will add weighted normal modifier. If you go to Control tilde and click on this wrench, you will see all the modifiers. Now, unlike in Blender, Vanilla, you don't have to manually adjust modifiers stuck in here because Hardop's gonna do it for you. So if you go to control tilde and go to general here on the sort modifier you can see which modifiers are sorted you can turn them on and off okay now here it's also important these options are denoting which kind of attributes gonna be added to a sharp edge so when you run sharpen what's gonna be added to an edge each edge that's above 30 degrees that's the default right so default is 30 you can change it so in our case, by default, it's going to be crease, B weight, and sharp. So when I'm going to run sharp here on this cube, you'll see that the color of my edges changes, and each of these edges is going to have crease, sharp, and B weight. Another tool that's really useful with hard ups is going to be Boolean, okay? So you can do it with box cutter, but you can also do it with hard ups. Select the object, shift select the one you want to cut, Q, and difference. Now, the cool thing about hard ups and box cutter is that they're going to create you a cutter collection here and you can turn it on and off with shift 2. Another thing you can do with hard ups, which I do a lot, is select an object with a cutter, go to Q and you can now ever scroll, which means you're going to recover cutters on that object. And if you scroll your mouse, you're going to be scrolling through all the modifiers in that object. Another thing that's really useful is going to be smart apply. So if I'm going to apply bevel and weighted normals, I'm going to have three modifiers running on that mesh, correct? If you want to apply a boolean and keep the other two, because you know the structural bevel and weighted normals, you don't want to apply them, you can run smart apply. And you can do it either by going to Q and alt clicking on ever scroll or just simply going to operations and smart apply, okay? This will apply the booleans, mirrors, everything. So here, let's say that I have this cube and there was a corner here and I wanted to mirror it, right? So now mirroring hard ops works in a very interesting way. Alt X and you can press tab to recover more options. You can press also D to um, reveal the mirror menu. Uh, you can change it to flip, symmetry, basic, etc. Play with it, it's fun. Now, if you want to mirror across multiple axes, you're going to hold shift. And if you hold shift, you can mirror across multiple axes with literally one click. It's brilliant. If you want to reset the mirror, press X, okay? So if now, if I wanted, for example, to mirror this twice, so let's say I had something mirrored and I wanted to mirror it again, so I wanted to add another mirror modifier, what you need to do is press Alt X, then A, which you're going to add another mirror, and then you mirror again. And when you do that, you're going to have two mirror modifiers running in your blender. Another tool that you might be using quite a lot is Array. And uh, this is one that's really easy. Click Array, and then you can press X to choose the axis. And if you press A another time, you're going to have another array. You can keep stacking them as many times as you want. 
really convenient and very fast. Now let's go to edit mode and talk about edit mode options because they're quite important. One of the most common tools I'm using is Shift Curve Extract. To select two faces, go to Q and Shift Curve Extract, which we're going to rip these faces off of the mesh, create a separate object and add solidification to it, which is really, really quick. Another tool that's really convenient is going to be Altium Macro, which is Inset Outset. So Altium Macro, Inset Outset, very convenient. Another really cool tool that you might be using is Selection to Boolean. So for example, if I wanted to grab this face, inset it and then use it as a Boolean, I can do it very easily watch. So in order to do that, you need to go to Q menu, then go to Mesh Tools here, right? And then Selection the Boolean. Move your mouse, click, move your mouse and click and you're done. And you got a boolean made out of an inset, which is really, really convenient. Another awesome tool that you might be using quite a lot is going to be Curve Extract. So if I'm going to create, for example, something like this here, and I'm going to sharpen this to add Auto Smooth, I can basically select this edge here and go to this menu and Curve Extract. I can create a pipe out of this. Now I'm going to show you a cool trick, okay? If I'm going to grab this pipe, go to Q, Curve Extract, and X, then Control A and Visual to Mesh, I'm going to be back to Mesh state. So now I can do, I can actually bevel these here, and I can bevel this here, right? Go back, go to Mesh Tools again, and Curve Extract. Press S, and you got a pipe. There's one more tool that I'm using quite a lot, and that's Alignment, okay? So here, if I wanted to align my view to this face, okay? What you can do is press Q, go to Mesh Tools and Align View. Now, usually what I do is I'm assigning shortcut here. So I'm going to right click and assign shortcut and Control Q, okay? Then I'm going to select the face, press Control Q. I'm going to align, hold Control, Shift or Alt. This is fantastic for aligning yourself to a specific orientation in space. Last up, I'm going to give you a quick application of Boolean like this um, is going to be by going to Q and Control click it on Sharp. And this is fantastic because it will apply just the Booleans. It's kind of like a dirty smart apply. Okay. But once I do that, I want to show you something cool. So now here I'm going to create some loops, you know, some random stuff here, whatever. It doesn't matter. And let's say that, you know, I wanted to clean this mesh. Okay. I didn't want these lines. I wanted to clean them and I want to do it with one click. You can do it by going to Q operations and clean mesh and you're going to end up with a clean mesh. Now it will not clean everything, but I'm using also machine tools cleanup. And sometimes I'm using 3d print toolbox to clean stuff as well. Go to cleanup, make manifold. And these are three tools I'm using for cleanup. At the start of this video, I told you it's a master of hard ups in 10 minutes, but we still have some time. So let me show you one more thing. If you want to add a mat to your object very quickly, click on it, Alt M and click on add blank material. Now you can also scroll through random mats, Alt M and shift click on material scroll. Then scroll the mouse, the hard up is going to generate automatic mats. If you find one that you like, click, you're done. If you press Alt M and shift on blank mat, you're going to get glass, Alt M and Alt click on this one, you're going to get the missive. Really cool stuff. Okay, guys, well, this is 90% of stuff you're going to be using in hard ups. If you're going to learn these tools and how to use them, you're going to be able to do most of the things. And then you just have to, you know, watch our videos or our tutorials. I highly recommend our course, Ultimate Guide to Hard ups and Box Cutter, which will teach you all the tools. And also, if you follow our tutorials on YouTube, Modeling Toots, you're going to get better, better and better. We also have a free tutorial called Sci-Fi Terminal in Blender, which is specifically made for hard ups and box cutter users and beginners. So if you're a beginner with hard ups and box cutter and you don't feel super confident with it, then, you know, grab the course link in the description and you're going to be good. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.